again, as you mentioned, so many people are going gluten free because they think it makes you tired and bloated. And some people think it makes you gain weight. But you know what? This is simply not the case. Very it's few, not bad for you. No, very few people actually need to avoid gluten. There are a few different medical conditions. One is celiac disease. It's an autoimmune digestive disease. You have to have the gene for it. And they absolutely need to go gluten-free. Affects less than 1% of the population. <laughs> so, wow. Another myth is that obviously pasta and breads and all the wheat foods are very bad for you and that you shouldn't really cook with them. And I say that's as a, a dietitian, that's totally a myth, Karen, okay? I know how you are on And that. you know, the other thing is I want you to enjoy white or whole wheat. It doesn't matter. It's a myth that you have to do all whole wheat. You know, the Wheat Foods Council, they say enjoy all of them. They provide concentrated source of carbohydrate energy for concentration and focus, something we all need, right? Need focus, okay. Yeah. So look what I did. I created a fabulous with the whole wheat penne from the wheatfoods.org website. Mm. This is uh, feta cheese, sun-dried tomatoes, basil, basil, tossed with some roasted walnuts. You do have some carbs on the plate there. I That's do. not a bad thing, though. That's not. In fact, recent research shows that both low-fat and low-carb diets produce similar weight loss. Yeah. Now, what can we eat? Can we eat bread, pasta, anything? Exactly. Anything. Those are all great sources of carbs. And, you know, carbs are really important because they fuel both our bodies and brains with energy and the ability to focus. And both whole and enriched grains are going to provide other great nutrients in addition to the carbs like protein and fiber and vitamins and minerals. So, yeah, all of these would be great options. Everything, you know, from your pizza crust with some healthy toppings to your pasta. And I've even created a pasta salad for Ooh, us. What is this? So you've so, got the pasta in there. What else? Did you uh -huh. add to this is um, a primavera pasta salad. So it's got the whole wheat rigatoni, but it's got a ton of veggies. Great way to sneak in those veggies and get all those great nutrients we that were talking was about. Fabulous. And it looks very filling, too. It is really filling. And the great thing about this, you can prepare it ahead of time and then you can serve it cold, room temperature, whatever you like. There you go. Get in those carbs get in those veggies. You can include all your food groups. So you want some healthy grains in there for sustained energy and concentration. You want some lean protein for staying power. And you want some fruits and vegetables that are going to give you those important nutrients and antioxidants for optimal health. All reasons why a sandwich works, but you can do better than the traditional turkey. Try a cheese sandwich, but add tart sliced apple and spicy mustard to mix things up, all on whole grain bread. Tuna salad's a good staple, but roll it up in a tortilla for different taste and texture. And sunflower seed, almond butter, even hummus, all good options for a peanut butter sandwich. Turkey pesto pasta. What? Turkey I pesto know. pasta. I know. So Looks so delicious. good. So delicious. And it's so non traditional. We've taken chopped turkey, mixed it with a pesto, typical pasta, and add a little bit of dried cranberry for a sweet pop in a savory dish. I so, good. That is yes. so good. So good. So <laughs> good. Whole grains, and I have your enriched grains, mm -hmm. and people steer clear of white flour, but these enriched grains often have added B vitamins and iron. So the dietary guidelines say you want six servings of grains, that's just like one ounce of bread, that's not a giant plate of pasta, and to make half of those servings whole. So you can have whole grains and you can have enriched grains, and it's the combination that give you all the nutrients you need. The great thing about whole grains is they give you a lot of extra energy. Mm -hmm. So if you make something like a pasta salad or even have something like wheat berries, you can add different types of fruits and vegetables. It helps work in a lot of other nutritious food groups. I like to call this my vehicle food. So I'm eating my pasta, but I'm getting a whole serving of vegetables, and I have some cheese in there as well, so I'm getting some protein. Some energy. That's right. It's giving me the day. energy, but then I'm helping to sustain with the fiber. But what's interesting is recent research actually shows what people think is non-gluten, non-celiac gluten sensitivity may actually be caused by other conditions. So what this tells me as a dietitian is go to your doctor, get a proper diagnosis, do not self-diagnose. 
um, because in the absence of one of those medical conditions, there's no reason you need to get rid of gluten. That's a really good point. Before you start this diet, check with your doctor check first. Your doctor. And when you're skipping gluten, are you missing out on valuable nutrients? You know what, you are, and I'm glad you brought that up. And in fact, greens are so important. They provide 43% of the fiber in our diet today. And most of us are not meeting our fiber needs as it is. So if you cut out those grains, you'll really be low in fiber. Plus, they provide a variety of vitamins and minerals. They're fortified or they contain them naturally. Enriched and whole grains provide two-thirds of our folic acid that we need every single day. So again, variety of nutrients. And what's interesting is the whole and enriched grains have these naturally or they're fortified, whereas gluten-free products typically don't contain those vitamins and minerals. Mm. So there's a significant nutrition difference between the two.